Hey class, this video is on binomial theorem. Um, what the binomial theorem is, is that when you have a binomial, a binomial means um, a polynomial consisting of two terms, is that if we have a two of power, there, there is a pattern that we notice. So I'm going to talk about that pattern here. Um, in this video, we're going to be working out a couple examples on the binomial expansion and also finding out a specific term um, using this binomial theorem. So right now on the whiteboard, what I have um, shown is this, is that we have binomials here, our binomial in all these cases are, are A and B. And all I've done is I've expressed it as, I put them in different powers. So A plus B to the zero power, one to the first power, second power, third power, and fourth power. And what I've listed is that um, when you actually compute these products, so um, like this one, A plus B squared, what that means is A plus B times A plus B, well when you uh, compute that and multiply it and simplify it, it turns out to be this stuff off to the right. So there is a pattern here, and, and um, hopefully we can notice this. So we have 1 and then a plus b, and you kind of see that these terms get really complicated really fast. So there's got to be a better way to, to um, find out the product rather than multiplying it out. So if we look at this, and this is also in your notes, um, the pattern and, and what we use is something called Pascal's triangle. Um, Pascal's triangle, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, draw it over here. What it starts out with is in the first row, it's one. The second row, you're, you're, you have one and one. And what you do is you, is you constantly add these numbers. You get this triangle form. So we're going to have one and one. And when you add these two numbers in between, we're going to get a two. If I continue this pattern, you're going to get a one on the end, a one on the end. When I add one and two, we get three. 2 and 1, we get 3. Uh, let's continue this pattern. So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. All I'm doing is, is creating a triangle here, but also using the numbers above to get the numbers in the next row. So I have 1, 1 and 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. And we can see that we have the symmetry here, is that you, you get something that starts and then repeats the process, but in a backward um, fashion. So what I'm really trying to get to with this is looking at these numbers and also this pattern here in blue. Um, pause the video, ask yourself what you notice. But what I notice is looking at these numbers here. So I see a one. I see one also here in the top row. Over here, I see an A and a B, but what are the coefficients of this A and B? Well, it would be a one and another one. Well, one, one, that's over here. Coefficients over here are one, two, one, right, one, two, one. That's in this third row. Uh, next row we get one, three, three, one. You may notice that that's over here. So using these patterns, and we're going to use Pascal's triangle. So with this, the things that we should notice, and I want to notice it over here. Uh, so the coefficients are from Pascal's triangle. That's one thing. Another thing is the sum of the exponents. So you may notice that over here, um, the exponent is 2. If you look at every term, there's, the sum is also 2, right? This is 2. Um, for the second term, it will also be 2 because both of these are to the first power. And for this, this is also 2. I'm going to skip ahead to the 4. So every single term should have an x power sum of 4. So this is 4. Over here, this is a 3 and 1. So that's also 4. This is 2 and 2. Yep. This is 1 and 3. This is also 4, and this is also 4. That's another pattern. Another pattern that we see is, I want to look at the a's here. Let's look at this one right over here. Just look at the a power. So here we have a to the third, a squared, just an a. This would be a to the first, and then no a over here. So the a powers decrease, whereas the b powers, what happens there, those powers actually increase. So if, I'm still going to look at this um, to the third power. So I don't have any b's, now I have b to the 1 squared, and then to the third power. So b to the third power is also increase. Another thing, and this is the last pattern here, is the amount of terms. So over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. Over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Looking at our exponent, um, so when I have 0 as an exponent, we have one term. 1 as an exponent, we have 2 terms. 2 as an exponent, we have 1, 2, 3 terms. 3 as an exponent, we have 4 terms. 
we should notice is that of our exponent, the amount of terms is always one more than our exponent. Okay, so if our exponent is um, a plus n to the seventh power, we're gonna get six different terms here. Oh, sorry, eight different terms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, hopefully I counted that right. So that's another pattern, so I'm just gonna repeat. So the coefficients are Pascal's triangle, the sum of the exponents equal um, what our power was, the a powers increase, right? So we had, oh sorry, the a powers decrease, we had two, one, and zero. Our b powers increase, and the amount of terms is always one more than the exponent. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on an example of expanding a binomial. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this. All right, so our, our example for this, I'm just going to write, is going to be 5x plus, b, or plus 2. So this is a binomial. It's consisted of two terms. And let's say that this is raised to the third power. What I'm going to write right now is what we had earlier. This I'm going to write, so since we have it to the third power, I'm going to write a plus b to the third power. So at the beginning of the video, what was written for the third power was a squared plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b to the third power. This is what was originally written. So with this, when I write it of this form, I can tell what is my a. Well, my a in this case is 5x, and my b is 2. What we're going to do is we're going to plug those things in. I'm going to write whatever is um, a, I'm going to write that in green, so that's going to be 5x. And whatever is b, I'm going to write that in brown, that will be a positive 2. Alright, <clears throat> so all I'm doing is substituting here, substituting my values for a and b. So what squared? Instead of a, we're going to write 5x plus 3. Well, I have an a squared. Well, my a squared, also 5x. And my b, my b is going to be written in brown. Um, it was a positive 2. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. Plus 3. We have an a over here. Now, just to the first power, I'm just going to write 5 squared. And then b squared from over here will be 2 squared. And finally, b cubed, or b in this case, is 2. Okay, so this is going to take some quite a bit of time to simplify. Um, so let's look at this. This first term is 5x cubed. What I'm going to do is, is when you have a product, 5 and x is a product that are being multiplied, is you apply this exponent to both of them. So I'm going to... I'm going to cube 5, so 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. x cubed is ju just remains that over here. Um, so when I apply this exponent, we're going to have 3 times, well, 5 squared is 25. x squared is x squared. Let's keep this 2 here. Plus 3, 5x. Over here, this 2 squared, well, that's 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And over here, 2 cubed, well, that's 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and times another 2 is an 8. All right, let's further simplify. So we're going to have five or 125x cubed. All right, multiply these numbers. So uh, 3 times 25 is 75. 75 times 2 is 150. We're going to have this x squared still, plus... Over here, well, 3 times 5 is 15, times 4 is 60. So we're going to have 60x. At the very end, we're going to have a positive 8. So this is our answer. Um, but when you get, when you simplify, make sure that you have your, your exponents, your x's in decreasing order by exponents. So we have x to the third, 2, 1, and then 0 of our exponents. So this is in the correct order. If there are multiple letters, you would um, alphabetize them. Having the uh, A's at the very beginning, work through all the letters, and Z's at the very end. But this is our binomial that's been expanded to the third power. And this is fully simplified since there are no more like terms here.
All right, let's work through another example. Another example, this won't be of expanding, but it will kind of deal with that idea of, of finding a term. So I want to put out a problem of we're going to find the fourth term of, and that fourth term is going to be of a binomial, 1 plus 3m. And this is going to be to the seventh power. Dear Lord, okay. Meaning I'm multiplying one plus three M seven, seven different times. Okay, we're gonna get a huge binomial expansion. So what I'm gonna do is first off, I'm gonna write Pascal's formula to figure out what that, what that binomial expansion is. Um, so it'd be one, 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 two, one. Keeping in mind that this first row is to the zeroth power, the second row is to the first power, uh, third row is to the second power. So let's continue. One, three, three, one. One, four, six, four, one. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. Just continue. Hopefully I don't mess up. So this is to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe this is it. So it's saying uh, the fourth term. So if I look at this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight terms. I want to find the fourth. So one, two, three, I want to find what this one is right here. Okay. So I know that the coefficient will be um, uh, 35. I'm going to multiply that with a bunch of things. So let's go ahead and write the, the expansion of this. So just remember, we always start out with our a, our first term. So this will be a to the seventh, plus we're gonna have a seven, a seven, a, and the seventh power becomes a six power. Now we introduce b to the first power. Our third term will be 21, a to the fifth power, b to the second power, let me erase this, plus 35, a to the fourth, b to the third, right? The sum is still seven. And that's actually the term that we wanted to find here, the fourth term here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that over here. Let's write that in green. So I know that one is our a term and three m is our b term. So plugging that into here, so let me just rewrite it. So 35, a to the fourth plus b to the third. We're going to substitute what our A value is and our B value. Our A value, in this case, was a one, right, A, so it's one to the fourth power. And our B is going to be three M, three M to the third power, instead of B. So with this, A to the fourth power, well that's one, or sorry, one to the fourth power is one times one times one times one, which is just one, and one times, oh sorry, we're not adding here, we're multiplying. And one times 35 is just 35. Okay, multiplied by, I'm going to raise both of these to the third power, so three to the third power. Well, that's three times three times three, that's 27. And we're gonna have m to the third power. And all we really have to do here is just multiply, 35 times 27. That's gonna take some work, so I'm gonna put some scratch work over here. So this will be 35. This will be 21 plus three, which is 24. Put a zero, two times five, which is 10, carry the one. And two times three, which is six, plus one is seven. Our answer will be 945, meaning this will be 945 m to the third power. So just to recap for here, finding the fourth power, first I wrote out the Pascal's triangle um, for our expansion. I went to the seventh, so this is Actually, it's to the eighth row, but this represents the seventh power. And I've just picked out the fourth term here. I use this coefficient and kind of our um, variables with their corresponding exponents, plugged in my A, plugged in my B, and found out what that term would be. Um, so that's an easier alternative to actually multiplying all this out and getting that binomial expansion. But that was it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye.